side? From my side, admittedly, I'd probably do anything you asked me to do, but the timing was bigger than us. I had really been grappling over the last couple of years with trying to figure out how to be more inclusive, how to present the work in a way that invited more people to see themselves. You know, the last thing I ever wanted to do was put work in the world around shame, vulnerability, and courage then make people feel like they had to do something extra to find themselves in it. You know, I thought I had controlled for that with my sample because I've always been hyper vigilant about diversity in the people I interview and in the data sources. In fact, one of the earliest criticisms of my work was that the sample population actually over-indexed around Black women and Latinx folks. But I started to get comments, um, especially from Black women and men. Comments like, you know, I'm having to work at this more to see myself in it, more than I would have preferred or more than I would have liked to have to do. Finally, it was the combination of a conversation with you and a conversation with Austin Channing Brown on her TV show where I thought the problem isn't the research. The research resonates with a diverse group of people because it's based on a diverse sample. But the way I present my research to the world does not always resonate because I often use myself and my stories as examples. And I have a very privileged white experience. That was a huge aha for me. Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, one of the things that struck me was in The Gifts of Imperfection, there's a scene where I'm in sweats and I have dirty hair and I'm running up the Nordstrom escalator with my daughter to exchange some shoes that her grandmother bought her. Immediately, I'm overwhelmed because I look and feel like shit and there's all these perfect looking people giving me the side eye. And just as I start to go into shame, a pop song starts playing and Ellen breaks out into the robot. And I mean, full on, unfiltered, unaware, just sheer joy. And as the perfect people start staring at her, I'm reduced to this moment where I have to decide, am I going to betray her and roll my eyes and say, you know, Ellen, geez, settle down. Or am I going to just let her do her thing and be joyful and unashamed? You know, I end up choosing her and actually dancing with her. And it's a, it's a great story about choosing my daughter over acceptance by strangers. But I've shopped enough with Black friends to know that if I was not dressed up, even if I, even if I was dressed up, and I was in a department store where my black daughter broke into a dance, there would be a whole other set of variables to consider, including being hassled by security, possibly separated from my daughter, even arrested. So when you asked me if we could focus the work through the lens of the black experience, it was a hell yes for me. I want to figure out how to better serve. In addition to telling my story, which I think is helpful, I want to co-create so people see themselves in the work. Co-creation is how we can tell stories from the Black experience that illustrate the data. I mean, does that make sense to you? It does. This is our first time really digging into your grappling with this. Your questions make absolute sense, and it also makes sense why you wanted to do this together. You still said, are you sure you want me to do it with you? You have my permission to use my work and do it. I know. I was scared. I'm still scared. No, I get it. I understand the fear. And I know we have to be prepared for the question about you being the editor of a book about Black experience. But there's nobody I trust more, particularly on these topics, who has studied them more and who cares more. It's not just the research piece. There are other people who study these topics. But you can combine the research expertise with compassion. You are, this sounds really corny, an embodiment of your work, of the research, of the knowledge. I think it takes the eye of somebody who has done this level of research you have done and who cares about other people's stories. I feel such a sense of responsibility and protectiveness about the stories we've asked people to share for this anthology. We have to be good stewards of this information. So I definitely get the fear and reluctance, but I believe good stewardship takes both of us. I know as we read these powerful essays, we both took turns feeling a little overwhelmed with the responsibility of protecting them. Yeah, I mean, for sure. I've been doing this work for 25 years now. I know the stories in this book can change, even save people's lives. It's an honor to do this with you, honestly. I've been a shame and vulnerability researcher for a long time, but 
not any long term.